What is happening, YouTube? It's Matt Faircloth. Welcome to this YouTube channel. As I said, my name is Matt, and my company is called The DeRosa Group, and we are a real estate company dedicated to transforming lives through real estate. And one way that we do that is by offering awesome education for you guys to learn all about real estate investing here on this YouTube channel. If you guys like what we do, do me a favor like this video, subscribe to this channel, leave a comment below. Love to hear from you guys. And also consider going to Facebook and joining our DeRosa Insiders community, which is free, capital F for free, that you guys can join us there. Now, Mentorship Monday works like this. This is Mentorship Monday. People email questions to help me at DeRosaGroup.com. Help me at DeRosaGroup.com. That's where they send their questions. And me or one of my team members will answer the question here on the YouTube channel for you and everyone else to learn from. Pretty good deal, huh? This one comes from Jacob says, Hey, uh, love to reach out to you. I'm 23 years old. Love that you're getting into real estate so early and currently working in a restaurant. Want to get into real estate and want to look at maybe multifamily, but also really curious about retail and how to make retail work and maybe converting old retail spaces into something that multiple businesses can operate. Love it. First of all, why there's an opportunity in retail, okay? Retail, the world of retail, and that's just a place where you go to shop, right? So retail strip center, a strip mall, or even like a retail building with like retail on the first floor and apartments above, all those things qualify as retail. And retail in general just means a place where people go and direct commerce locally. You didn't, didn't have to walk in the door. It could be like a law office or it could be a travel agency where they just talk to people on the phone, but it's really a business over a residence and not an industrial place where they're making something. Yeah, it, it's it's not something that's that's manufacturing or residential. It's a place where business is carried. And a lot of times it's in a place where multiple businesses are like a strip center or something like that. What Jacob's referring to here and what you see a lot of are multiple commercial centers, like a strip center or like a small office building or something like that, where there's a lot of retail happening all at once. So let's just use a commercial strip center as the example. Commercial strip centers have gotten hammered, gotten hammered because of, you know, co make the list, right? COVID, Jeff Bezos, uh, thanks Amazon. Uh, just And it's not really his fault. It's just the world has gravitated towards, thanks to our handy dandy cell phones here, we're able to buy whatever we need online, not just on Amazon, but even on Target. You used to be able to walk into and buy stuff. Now you can buy on Target, Target online. So why would I get in my car and drive to that physical store if I could go to that physical store's website or have somebody deliver it to me from a warehouse or whatever it may be? Life has gotten a lot more convenient. We needed a tube of toothpaste back in the day. You had to get in your car and drive to the CVS or drive to the local convenience store, or the local pharmacy around the corner from you and buy that tube of toothpaste. I didn't have to do that. And I can push a button on my phone, off we go. I can have everything from a hoagie to a tube of toothpaste to a million other things delivered to my home. And that has drastically affected retail in all markets, in urban markets, suburban markets, everywhere. If I can get what I want and I'm willing to wait a day or two for it, why would I get in my car and drive 20 minutes to that retail center to get it if I could just have it delivered, right? That's become the logic here in America, right? So that has drastically affected retail where it used to be that's where you had to go to get all your stuff your tube of toothpaste but what you still can't do anytime soon on your cell phone in a retail strip center is do things like get your hair cut do things like go see a doctor do things like get an MRI. And some people still like to go shopping physically in a retail center. Like some people don't trust buying shoes online or buying clothes online. We'll try it on, see how it looks, even though they're figuring out how you can do that from home too, right? You try stuff on and set it back or digital mirrors, all that's coming. But until then, people may want to still go to a physical store to go buy something physical to pick it off the shelf and try it, right? All that said, guys, retail is changing. And if you are a real estate investor, as my friend Jacob is here, and you want to get into retail investing, the biggest thing that I'll give you is make it something that's physical required, meaning like you have to physically be there to utilize that retail store or make it something that is so you focused on a certain thing. Like let's, let's pretend that you guys go buy a retail strip center that's vacant or 50% occupied. And because a lot of retail strip centers are decimated by, you know, COVID and online sales, you probably get them for a pretty good price per square foot, a lot less than what they used to sell for. So let's say you go buy one of these places that's 50% occupied and you make it something that is theme based. And I'm not talking about having like, you know, cartoon characters running around theme based. I'm talking about what if it was a wellness center? 
and you target marketed the chiropractor, the dental office, and the, the doctor's office and the MRI place. You put it all in there. This is all, believe me, this is all happening. This isn't Matt's idea. This already exists, um, but you could be part of that movement. And as we have an aging population in the US, there are people who are going to want those wellness centers. They're going to be all kinds of things to keep them well, maybe with like a drugstore as an anchor, meaning like the big store that attracts everybody on the, on the corner and everything else you need down the line. Maybe it is a beauty uh, focused center. So maybe there is a nail place and a hair salon for women and a hair barber for men um, and other things that people need for their beautification needs. And maybe a nice boutique store with cool stuff that you can't buy online or you don't wouldn't trust buying online, like nice shoes, nice clothes, whatever, right? The world is your oyster, uh, Jacob, but the, the sense that I've seen and those that are heavily invested in retail have told me is that the retail movement is going to move towards making these retail centers full-on um, context-based centers. So not just um, the, you know, the, the, the different stores that are all sort of different things. The, the, the retail centers that are going to be successful in, in the world moving forward are going to be centers that are focused on things you have to physically be there for and also things that are theme-based. So those are my two tips. And you guys can do really, really well um, in retail and buying those that are heavily discounted because they're, they've are they lost a lot of tenants and the owners are just, you know what, I just don't want to do this anymore. I know how to do retail in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, but I don't know how to do it. In, in the 2020s and forward. So I'm not going to sell this retail strip center. So you could find that owner and buy it from them. The, the tired baby boomer that doesn't want to do it anymore kind of thing, right? Now, once you've got the strip center and you want to set it up, a few key tips. Um, it, it really helps to get a realtor that's well-connected in the business owner market. So realtors, commercial realtors that have a background in commercial leasing are going to be key. You do not want to be the one that's going around finding the uh, the barber and the nail salon or whatever, if you don't have to get yourself a good commercial realtor to list it for you. What's great about retail in residential real estate, the owner pays for the real estate taxes and the insurance and all utilities uh, or most utilities and uh, repairs, all that kind of stuff. So in retail, if you get the right tenants and you get the right building and you're in a strong area, you could do something called triple net where you pass all those expenses on to the tenant. So even the real estate taxes, the insurance, the cost to maintain the parking lot, the shovel, the snow and all that kind of stuff, you're going to send the tenants a bill based on how many square foot they have and how much that bill and how much that charge was. They're going to pay their parapasu portion of that expense. Pretty cool, huh? You got to have the right tenants that are financially strong. You got to have the right, a lot of different boxes have to get checked but triple net leases are well accept, market accepted. Second, in retail, it's rarely month to month. It's rarely year to year on leases. They're typically five years or more on the lease contracts with rental increases every year. So um, the contracts are very, very landlord friendly in, in retail and, uh, and the, the revenue streams are very, very landlord friendly. So if you can get strong in retail, you can do very well. This is what I can think of right now. If you guys have other thoughts, if other retail investors are watching this video, leave some comments down below on retail, why you think it's amazing. If you're a retail hater and you think retail is going to completely go away and we're going to just do all of our business on our phones, you can leave that comment too. And why you think retail is risky or retail is not a good bet. It is an interesting space. It is a niche, super niche. Um, and it's viewed as a risky space right now um, because of all the changes in the world, which is why you can probably get a pretty good deal. So Jacob, great question. Get yourself out of that restaurant job you got and get yourself full-fledged into uh, retail real estate, as you said here in your email. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you guys for watching. Help me at derosagroup.com is the email address. You can shoot me a line and ask a real estate question. And I'll answer it here on the channel for you. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook at DeRosa Insiders. And we do lots of live posts and all kinds of cool live sessions um, and property tours online too. So join us there. Thanks for watching guys. Have a great and profitable week.